The sages said, Kindly tell us the mode of good conduct whereby the sensible man quickly attains higher worlds. Please tell us about virtue and evil that cause attainment of heaven or hell. Sutta said, A brahmana endowed with strict adherence to good conduct is perfectly wise. A brahmana learned in the Vedas and of good conduct is called a vipra. A brahmana endowed with only one of these two is a mere dvija. A brahmana following some of the prescribed rules of conduct and with the smattering of the Vedas is a kshatriya brahmana, at best a royal servant. The so-called brahmana, very careless in following the rules of conduct, is really a vaishya brahmana. One engaged in agriculture and trading activities is likewise. A brahmana plowing the field himself is a shudra brahmana. One of envious and spiteful temperament is a degraded dvija. A kshatriya who rules over a kingdom is a real king. Others are mere kshatriyas. A merchant dealing in grains, etc., is a Vaishya, and others of his caste are mere Vaniks. A person rendering service to Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, and Vaishyas is called a Shudra. A working agriculturist is a Vrishala, and the others are Dasyus. It is the duty of everyone in the four castes to get up early in the morning sit facing the east and meditate on God. He shall then think about the various acts of virtue, of matters regarding monetary dealings, the problems connected with them, the sources of income, and the items of expenditure. The direction in which one casts one's first glance on waking up indicates the good or bad that is likely to attend one on that day. The eight effects in order are longevity, hatred, death, sin, fortune, sickness, nourishment, and strength. The last yama, three hours of the night, is called usha, and the latter half of it is sandhi, the junction of night and day. A brahmana shall get up at that hour and answer the calls of nature. It must be in a covered place far from the house. He shall sit facing the north. If it is not possible due to any obstacle, he can sit facing other directions. He must never sit in front of water, fire, a brahmana, or the idol of any god. He must screen the penis with the left hand and the mouth with the right. After evacuating the bowels, the feces should not be looked at. Water drawn out in a vessel should be used for cleaning. One should not sit inside a tank or river for cleaning. No one shall enter the holy tanks and rivers dedicated to deities, mains, etc., and frequented by the sages without cleaning. The rectum must be cleaned with mud seven, five, or three times. The penis must be cleaned with mud as large as a cucumber fruit and the quantity of mud for the purification of the rectum shall be prasriti, half a handful. After the purification of the excretory organs, hands and feet must be washed, and gargling shall be done eight times. For gargling, the water can be taken in any vessel or a wooden cup, but water shall be spit outside, not in the river or tank. Cleaning the teeth with any leaf or twig must be without using the index finger and outside the water. 
After making obeisance to the gods of water, the twice-born shall perform the ablution with mantras. Sick or weak persons shall take bath up to the neck or hips. Sprinkling water up to the knees, he shall perform the mantra snan. He shall propitiate deities, etc., with the water from the holy tank or river. A washed, dry cloth should be taken and worn in the form of a panchakacha, wearing the lower garment in a special way. In all sacred rites, the upper cloth should also be used. While taking bath in the holy river or tank, the cloth worn shall not be rinsed or beaten. The sensible man shall take it to a separate tank or well, or to the house itself, and beat it on a rock or plank to the gratification of the manes, O Brahmanas. The Tripundraka shall be drawn on the forehead with a Jabalaka mantra. If anyone enters water otherwise, he will surely go to hell. According to scholarly authorities, the mantra snan is as follows. Repeating the mantra, Apohi sta, water shall be sprinkled over the head for suppressing sins. Repeating the mantra, Yasya kshayaya, water shall be sprinkled over the joints and the legs. The order for sprinkling with water thrice is as follows. Feet, head, chest, head, chest, feet, and chest, feet, head. When one is slightly indisposed, or when there is danger from the king, or when there is civil commotion, or when there is no other way, or when one is about to undertake a journey, it is enough if one performs mantra snan. He shall drink by way of achaman, reciting the mantras from Surya Nuvaka in the morning, or from Agni Anuvaka in the evening, and perform the ceremonial sprinkling in the middle. O Brahmanas, at the end of the japa of Gayatri Mantra, Argya shall be offered thrice to the sun towards the east, and once more thereafter. The offering of Argya in the morning is by lifting both the hands high up, that in the midday, by letting the water filter through the fingers, and that in the evening, by pouring the water over the ground facing west. In the midday, the sun is to be viewed through the fingers, reciting the mantra prescribed for that. The circumambulation of oneself is performed in the prescribed manner, and the pure achaman without mantras is performed. Sandhya prayer performed before the prescribed time is ineffective. Hence, Sandhya shall be performed at the prescribed time. The expiatory rite for the omission of Sandhya prayer for a day is the repetition of Gayatri a hundred times more than the usual number for ten days. If the omission is for ten days or more, Gayatri must be repeated for a hundred thousand times as atonement. If one omits Sandhya for a month, one has to be reinvested with the sacred thread. For the sake of prosperity, deities shall be propitiated such as Isha, Gauri, and Guha, Vishnu, Brahma, Chandra, the moon, and Yama. Thereafter, the entire rite shall be dedicated to the Supreme Brahma, and pure Achama shall be performed. Towards the right of the holy water, in a splendid prayer hall, temple, or a common moth, or in a stipulated place in one's own house, one shall sit firmly with the mind in concentration and perform the Gayatri Japa after due obeisance to all gods. He shall not omit the practice of the Pranava Mantra. While practicing the Pranava, he shall realize fully the identity of Jiva, the individual soul, with the Supreme Brahma. The full implication of the Gayatri must be born in the mind when the japa is performed. We pray to Brahma, the creator of the three worlds, to Achyuta, the sustainer, and Rudra, the annihilator. 
we meditate on the self-luminous Brahman that prompts us in the activities of virtue and wisdom, bestowing enjoyment and salvation. The self-luminary that is the driving force behind the sense organs, mind, intellect, and acts of volition. The devotee who dwells thus on the meaning constantly attains the Brahman. <laughs>